uh, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I speak. All right. Um, uh, just just now we mentioned about uh, Zion being the uh, uh, the church uh, that God has chosen, according to uh, Hebrews chapter twelve. All right. And this is a term that is commonly used in uh, uh, in the Old Testament scriptures. Uh, so, so whenever you read the scriptures, when you come across uh, the term Zion, and then uh, you should look at it uh, from uh, the perspective of the church yeah, to understand, in order to understand it uh, better or to understand the chapter uh, better. Okay, <clears throat> now. We mentioned that uh, God has done a lot of works in Zion. Outside Zion, you find that all this work would not have been done. Okay, especially the work of salvation. And one of the uh, great works we mentioned about is overcoming death, right? And He swallowed up death in His mountain in the church. Now, I think this is um, identical to what Jesus said in the gospel. Uh, we turn to Matthew, <coughs> uh, Matthew chapter uh, sixteen. Uh, Matthew chapter sixteen. Uh, we read uh, verse eighteen. Uh, sixteen verse eighteen. And I also said to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Well, now it's quite clear, yeah. You know, the establishment of the church is with a clear purpose in mind that is in a way to overcome the gates of Hades, right? To overcome the power of darkness. And you know, the gates of Hades represent death. Uh, represent you know the the power of Satan and so when the church was established especially when you look at the the expansion in of the church in the time of the apostle yeah, it's like the mighty power of God was with the church and so many souls were saved yeah. and so this is the the purpose yeah, of for God to establish his church and so we need to understand this okay and you find that if the church um, does not save anymore, it means that the church has lost um, the purpose for her existence. Okay, simple as that. That's why today we cannot compromise because we are the only true church. If we say we are just like you know all the other churches there, then it's like our purpose of existence is no longer there. All right. Because we are no different from all the other churches. Okay. Now, so <clears throat> with this in mind, when you look at, you know, like what we said, yeah, earlier on, we defined church being a group of people whom God has called out, whatever, whom He has uh, bought with His own blood. Yeah. Now, so the church uh, is uh, comprised of uh, many individuals uh, who have come to believe in Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do I want to talk about? Uh, slip my mind. Okay, uh, Luke, eh? we turn to Luke. Uh, chapter 24. Hmm. Uh, Luke chapter 24, <coughs> from verse 46 onwards yeah, to uh, 47. Okay, now, then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 
Now, you find that the church does not only talk about Christ's suffering, you know, how he has come, how he has died, you know, uh, for our sin. Now, what the church should preach about also must also include verse 47, repentance and the remission of sin. Now, if a church is not vested with the power of God, yeah, if the church is not the church uh, that God has established, you'll find that the church will not have the power to forgive sin. Today, we find that most uh, uh, Christian denominational churches uh, would talk about only the first part, but not so much about the second part, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? They talk about, oh, Christ has died for you, therefore you need to believe in Jesus, and then you are saved. But we know that that is not the end of the story. Right? We must include the second part. Now today we have the courage to do so, to tell people that you need to be baptized, your sin needs to be forgiven, and because we are from the true church, we are the true church. Right? So we preach with confidence. We preach with faith. We preach with faith. Right? Okay. Uh, <coughs> now, so, now, I want you to turn to, uh, what is it? Uh, Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. I think I also mentioned this yeah, uh, during my uh, Sabbath day sermons. Okay, we turn to chapter 28. Uh, chapter 28. Huh? We read uh, verse 16. Uh, 28. Verse 16. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a trite stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Now, here it talks about what God has placed or has laid in Zion. He said he has laid a stone for a foundation, a precious cornerstone. What do you think it refers to? Who is this a precious stone? Or precious cornerstone? Huh? Eh? Jesus. How do you know? How do you know it's Jesus? Okay, we turn to where? Right? Efficient, yeah? Okay. Turn to efficient. Okay, we read the Ephesians chapter chapter two. Yeah? Ephesians chapter two. Okay, chapter 2, we read uh, verse 19. I ah, know. Um, yeah, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Verse 20. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. Now, so in whom the whole building be fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. All right. Now, so when you read um, verse twenty, uh, chapter twenty-eight of Isaiah, it said, "Behold, I lay in Zion a stone." He laid Zion, what uh, a cornerstone in the church, yeah, in the church of the firstborn, 
according to Hebrews. Yeah? Zion is the church of the firstborn. He laid a church in the heavenly Jerusalem. Now, so today, if I ask you a question, where can you find Jesus? TJC only. If you are not here, you can't find Jesus. Simple as that. So I think I think we must how can I say it? firm firm up our um, understanding. Okay? Only in true Jesus church you can find Jesus Christ. You can't find Jesus elsewhere. No. Yeah. Okay. Now and you know that this cornerstone also refers to the what? The truth. Am I right? The foundation. Yeah, the truth. So, where can you find the truth today? It's in the church. That's why, according to uh, the prophecy of Isaiah and Micah, and out from Zion, the law of God shall go forth. Is that all true? Yeah. So, that's why today we go out to preach. You know, I think I mentioned this last year. I can't, I can't remember exactly when. Yeah? You know, I don't like the term share, you know. If you are my brothers and sisters, then I share the word with you. Because you are my brothers and sisters. But if you are an outsider, I'm here to preach to you. Don't, don't be so humble and go there, okay, I go to an outsider. I share with you. No, I preach to you. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Because we have been given the, the truth from God and our duty is to preach. Right? No sharing. I don't listen to you. You listen to me. You, you get what I'm saying? Of course, we have to be nice, have to be gentle. All right? if, if the guy has questions you know, to ask you, then you listen. But you don't listen to his preaching first. You know? Listen to one hour preaching. Okay, now my turn to preach. Forget it. Okay. So, the cornerstone is in Zion, meaning we have been given the truth already. We must have confidence in our own truth. If you don't even believe in the basic belief of the church, then we can't preach. Simple as that. You know, I always believe in this. Yeah. We always say faith. Where does where does it come from? It come from knowing the word. If you know the basic belief well, it increases your faith. And if you don't believe in the in the word, the basic belief, then your faith will disappear. Simple as that. Okay? Now, we know that when we talk about faith, yeah, we need to believe in the basic belief, including the one true church. Including the one true church. If you don't believe in the one true church, then your faith will disappear. When you are being challenged, you can't do anything. Hey. You know, this faith is important. Why not only it helps you to understand God better, it actually gives you power to defend and to, to discern as well. You will know what is right and what is wrong. Right? That's why, that's why we said anyone, any worker who does not believe in the TJC is the only true church, he should resign. We said this. He's not qualified to be a worker. Yeah, he should resign. Simple as that. Because now the church is in is in great confusion because of this. There's everywhere confusion everywhere. How can I put it? It's like it's like um, we can't we can't handle the situation anymore. It's like out of control. You know, people in the church can say anything they want. But this is the church of God. Oh. Right? We, we, 
every word that we speak will will be judged by God. Okay, I want to. I think I mentioned this, but never mind. Mention again. Uh, we tend to uh, Ezekiel. Chapter 25. <coughs> uh, we read uh, verse 8. Chapter 25, verse 8. Thus says the Lord God, Because Moab and Seir said, Look, the house of Judah is like all the nations. Right? To many of us, this is just like a harmless statement, you know, a simple statement. And perhaps it's a statement of truth to many people. Yeah? But because of this, you you see that, you know, this Moab and Seir, you know, um, will face the judgment of the Lord. Now, we read verse 11. And I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that I am uh, the Lord. Yeah? Now, we read the uh, Psalms yeah, to understand uh, what uh, Judah refers to. Okay, Psalm 70, 78. Verse 68. But chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. Okay, it's clear. Judah can at times also represent what? Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the church, like what we say. Yeah, it's a group of people whom God loves. Very clear. All right? Now, Moab and Seir said, Look, the house of Judah is just like all the other nations. You know, from a from a worldly perspective, this is not wrong. It's just like the true Jesus church, in a worldly perspective, TJC is one of the many churches in the world. But we cannot afford to say that TJC is just like any other churches. According to some, Judah is Mount Zion, which God loved. And because of that, God is going to punish Moab and Seir. It's a serious offense against the work of God. It's not against me. It's not against, you know, um, those who are leading the church. It's against God Himself. Right? That's why I think things concerning the church, we have to be careful with our words. We cannot just you know, say anything we want. All right? TJC is the only church of God. And from the very beginning, this is how I was taught from young. And it's the only church that saves no other church. Yep. So we have to be very careful. Nowadays, you know, I learned that I'm not I'm not sure how true, you know, you know, this thing is. I think one of the one of the trainee preacher preachers, yeah, one of the trainee preachers, he preached in one church. I think he mentioned about one true church. And when he came down, one work, worker told him, "Don't say this again." <laughs> in the TJZ, I said, "What?" See. That's why I believe, yeah? Now, if you have any doubts about the church, then you raise questions, right? We'll do our best to answer you. Don't worry, I will not shout at you. I'll be very nice to you. But please ask questions. Right? If you want, I, I can even give you a sweet. 
All right? This is very important. You understand what I'm saying? There's only one church. One only. One. And this church is established by God. By God Himself. You, you know the Old Testament scriptures is written for our learning. Yeah? It's about the church. Things concerning the church. Yeah, it's very clear. You know, if if we say that TJC is just like any other churches, then you are either a Moabite or Edomite. No different from them. Okay. You can't find a verse in the scriptures which says that there are two churches which are not connected in any sense, but both of them are called true churches. No. Prove it to me. Where? Now, that's why anything concerning the church, concerning God, we must use the Bible to back up our belief. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Okay. We continue. Um, where am I? Now, we turn to Isaiah. No, no Isaiah. No, no Isaiah. Some, eh? turn to some. Uh, let me see. Okay, 118. Uh, Psalms 118. <coughs> uh, Psalms 118, we read um, verse 22. And to verse 24. 22 to 24. Now the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Uh, this was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now when we join this together with Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16, then you understand what I mean. Huh? Now today God has placed what? the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone in Zion, then our response should be, we rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every morning when you wake up, you should give thanks to God because this is the only true church. And you are now, we are now in this true church of God. You should sing praises. Praise the Lord because we are what? Special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. This should be our mindset. You know, you know, this chief cornerstone is cannot be found easily. No, because we have we have found it. It's, it's in our midst. It's supporting us. It's giving us life. Right? And it's in the church of God. That's why we are very thankful. Okay, I tell you what, I'll give you time to ask questions. Huh? If you have doubts, please, please raise your doubt. Alright, now we turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah. We read the chapter 46. Uh, chapter 46, verse 13. I'll bring my righteousness near, it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger. Now, again, I like this very much. much huh? He said, I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. And like he, he 
places salvation in Zion. It's, it's here in the church. Meaning no other place you can find salvation apart from Zion, the church, the church of God. Right? So that's why, that's why when, when I always believe in this, if we hold on to the patterns of sound word that the Holy Spirit has given to the church, then you will begin to make sense of your reading, including all the, all, all the Old Testament scriptures, like the minor prophetic books, the major ones. You will begin to make sense of them because majority of them talk about the church. Yeah? Okay, salvation is in Zion. Where can you find salvation? If salvation is here, where, did you, where else do you still want to go? Where do you want to go to find salvation? Alright, we turn to Joel. Hmm. We turn to Joel chapter chapter two, yeah? Chapter two, yes. Okay, we read verse thirty two. Now this part of the scriptures yeah, consists of two parts, right? Now and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if you, if you do not read the second part, then obviously it's like saying that, you know, it doesn't really matter which church you belong to, as long as you call out to the Lord, then you will be saved. It seems that way, okay? If you don't read the second part of the verse. But if you connect them together, then you see a totally different picture altogether. Right? Now, in verse 32, it says, For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance or oh, he said it shall be salvation as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls he's talking about those who remain in Zion when they call out to the Lord for help then they shall be saved that's the meaning yet yeah, you can we sometimes we take uh, like verses out of context you know, you know to, to suit our belief or whatever but that is not correct. Only in Zion, when you call out to the Lord in terms of matters concerning salvation, then God will listen. If we remain. You, you know, to me, um, this book of uh, the book of Joel talks about you know what the church will go through in the future. And you find that those who remain in Zion, when they call out to God, God will listen. Yeah. And the church will go through a period of great struggle. Great struggle. Yeah. And well, I think I think I think we we all believe that in, 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 in the process there will be many victims. But many will, will will fall away anyway. Okay. Now so we hope that you know, uh, we can really uh, understand that salvation can only be found in Zion, no other place. Okay. All right. Question. So far, do you have any questions? No, it's okay. If you don't agree with me, you can challenge me. Serious. I I won't eat eat you up. I I promise. Yeah, you can challenge me. Because I believe in this, if the truth that we have received is from God, then the truth can never be overthrown. You can never defeat the truth. The truth belongs to God. Yeah, please, feel free. Yes. Sorry. 
Yeah, Joel. Is it there? So Joel is quoted there. Hallelujah. Hmm. I will come to that. I forgot. Okay. Do you have questions? If not, then we come to this particle of it. Actually, I haven't finished this one. I finished this one. Too. Any question? No? Um, okay. Um, we tend to uh, sum. Yeah? Uh, we read the uh, one hundred and thirty two, one three two. Uh, verse thirteen. Now, for the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his dwelling place. Now, again, I think if you are using NKJV, you look at the footnotes, what does it mean? Dwelling place. Home, home, sweet home. It's the home of God. Hallelujah. You want God to move house? Move to another place? He only has one home. PJC. Yeah. And so he has chosen Zion. And and verse 14, he said, This is my resting place forever. Forever. And here I will dwell, for I have desired it. And he will not change. And that is the only place he has chosen as the church. So that's why I think, you know, if if you are if you spend a bit of time, you know, and then if you go through all the verses concerning Zion, you will see all this. It's not like I have invented it. I, I use a concordance. I look I look up all the verses on Zion, 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 but I read, I read, I read. And then you get it. That's it. It's all about a church. It's all about a church. It's a home. You know, together we become the home of God. It's because we have been bought by the blood. We have been cleansed. That's why God delights in staying here. Yes. Okay. Um, we turn to Revelation. Uh, Revelations, we read uh, chapter 14. <clears throat> okay, we read uh, verse 1, uh, verse 1, we'll do. Chapter 14, verse 1. Then I look and behold a lamp standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Now, here it talks about the close relationship between uh, Jesus Christ and the 144,000. Now, the question is, uh, where were, are they standing? They are standing on the Mount Zion, on Mount Zion, in the church. That's why you... A person can never foster, if you like, a very close relationship with God yeah, without being in the church of God. I cannot say I can have a good relationship with God, but I don't come to the true Jesus church. No, you can't. Right? 
So the only way for us to have a good relationship is by by gathering in the body of Christ, the Church of God. You know, sometimes uh, now the people come up with new ideas. Uh, uh, maybe we don't need to go to the church, you know, because if I go to the church, you know, I always, uh, you know, I'm always, um, you know, see the the one that I don't like, you know, whatever. So I want to worship at home. That kind of idea. No, that's why we must always gather together as one. We pray together, you know, in the spirit we share the word of God together. Right? Okay, I think this is about um, Zion. Any questions so far? No. But now um, the the not the hymns, uh, the the article of faith. Yeah? Turn to that, please. And you know the issue actually was raised, has been raised within the church. Right? Now, and we can see that uh, the pe- where they are coming from, they ask, they raise this question not because um, um, they want to know more. They raise the question with an intention to attack the church, right? And they are from the deceived. They are from the deceived. So you have to be very careful. Yeah? They are trying their very best to find faults with every what articles of faith of the true Jesus Church. Right? Now look at it again. Look at it here. Yeah? And it says there is no mention of only true church or the one true church or whatever. Now look at it very closely. The true Jesus Church established by our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit during the time of the latter reign is the restored is the restored true church of the apostolic time. Now, my question is, how many true church or true churches were there in the time of the apostle? One. So, is the restored one mean that one, the same true church is being restored? Indicating what? There's only one. Simple logic. Is that also? Okay, now just now I asked about the quotation. You know, I asked about the quotation, Joel chapter 2. It's in, you said, um, it's in the original uh, articles. Yeah? All right, now, hallelujah. We turn to um, Joel. Well, verse 23. Now be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you, he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you. You again refers to Zion. Can you see the emphasis? You, you, you. Just like, just like we read uh, in Isaiah 51 verse 16 and said to Zion, you are my people. The emphasis is on, or the focus is on, Zion. Okay. Um, um, Given you the formal rain faithfully, and it will cause the rain to come down for you. The formal rain. The formal rain has already come, and the latter rain in the first month. Okay. Now, here... Zion, we know that God's people, yeah. We must no longer look at this in a geographical sense, if you know what I'm saying, because it has been elevated to a spiritual level already. All right, 
Now, so rain is to be given to Zion alone. Formal rain has been given, and now is the time for the latter rain, the true church. Now, we're again back to the article of faith, yeah? Come back to the article of faith. It said, is the restored. What does it mean? Why, why, does, why does the church need to be restored? Why? Because the first one has gone corrupt, isn't it? Meaning, before this church is restored, there wasn't any true church. That's why you need this one to be restored. You understand what I'm saying? So it goes to show that there is only one. You understand what I'm saying? Simple logic. Okay. Amos 9 is there, so. Uh, in the original, yeah. Okay, we turn to Amos chapter 9. Um, verse 11. Now, on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repay its damages. I will raise up its ruin, and rebuild it as in the days of old. What uh, the? How can I say it? the promised one? Yeah, is is rebuilt. I, I I tell what yeah I'll spend a bit of time to talk about this uh, in one of the lessons. Okay. Now is that clear now for this the article of faith? Because some people want to challenge the church by saying that look, the word one and only is not there. Plus, I, I think it's important for us to understand this. Like what I said, we welcome questions. Right? And it's good that you ask questions. But some people, I'm not talking about you, some people, they ask questions not with an intention to help strengthening the belief, but with an intention to demolish the belief of the church. And that is wicked. Alright, question. Yes. He knows I'm a nice guy, this way he keeps me. Go. Just, uh, just asking mm. Mm. So in Joel chapter two. 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 Mm. The yes. How do we know? Anyone? Okay. Uh, we turn to Hosea. The book of Hosea. 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 Chapter 6. Okay, let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us, He will, talking about God, yeah? He will come to us like the rain, am I right? Like the latter and formal rain to the earth. Is that okay? We, that's why we said rain prefigures the Spirit. He will come to us like the rain. Yeah? Okay. 
If you are not happy, read one more. Um, we turn to Psalms. Seventy uh, seventy two mm, Psalm seventy two Now he shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that waters the earth. Can you see? Uh, uh, the Bible always uses rain uh, to represent uh, the coming of God. Okay? Right. Question? Any more questions? No? So, is this clear now? It's clear, okay. Okay. Um, we, we conclude. Let's say a sound first. Amen. Okay, I think for don't record. Uh, if you are interested in reading more about the rain, yeah, the I think the latest mana there's an article on that. Okay.